Hello there, my fellow Battle Brothers, and welcome back to our long-running series known as the Space Marine Armory. Typically, this is a place where we talk about all kinds of guns and tanks and weapons used predominantly by the Emperor's Angels of Death. I'm saying typically this time because today's topic is a bit more unusual, at least as far as this playlist is concerned. But I'm still putting it here because, while not a gun, or a ship, or a tank, or a blade, this is still arguably the most important asset in any Space Marine chapter's arsenal. Ladies and gentlemen, the Fortress Monastery. This is very likely gonna be a two-episode coverage as well, as today we will say a few words about them in general, and then I'm gonna go from the outside to the inside and describe the most important chambers of such a place. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Every chapter of the Adeptus Astartes maintains a mighty fortress monastery, a sanctuary where it trains every generation of space marines and keeps their secrets safe. Great Imperial bastions in their own right, monasteries can take many forms, from towering keeps and skyscraping spires, to subterranean vaults and even seabed domes. Some monasteries are even mobile, as they are incorporated into spacecraft. Examples of such include the Black Templar's Battle Barge Eternal Crusader, the Imperial Fist's Mighty Starfort Phalanx, or the mobile asteroid fortress of the Dark Angels known as the Rock. However, most chapter monasteries are terrestrial, either based on their own chapter planet, one of their seed worlds, or another imperial world by ancient accord with the planetary governor. These imposing edifices are often located in the wilderness regions of their world, far away from the other cities and towns and the other inhabitants. On more primitive worlds, ignorant tribesmen will talk of the giant sky gods and their sacred mountain, warning their children against ever going there. Even on the more advanced worlds, the citizens leave the chapter well enough alone, often imposing a forbidden zone around the fortress monastery, which can stretch for hundreds of miles in all directions. In either case, this suits the chapter well enough, for the Battle Brothers are content to stand apart from the world around them and focus on the matters closer to home. A fortress monastery is where a chapter will safeguard its heritage and keep its trophies of war. It is quite rare for more than a fraction of a chapter to be in residence at any given time, since most of the chapter's companies can spend years away campaigning across the Imperium. Consequently, life in a fortress monastery tends to follow ancient traditions and faithful routines of prayer and devotion, which have long gone unchanged. The Codex Astartes teaches that, to be a great warrior, a space marine must be more than his weapons and armor, more than the genetic gifts of the Primarch, and more than the war machines provided to the chapter. He must be strengthened by faith in the Emperor and shielded by indomitable courage. What time a space marine does not give over to training will mostly be spent in prayer. Even rest is a secondary concern to the rituals of devotion. As a result of all of this, a fortress monastery is designed with those needs in mind. Its halls are studded with alcoves and shrines, and its vaults filled with combat arenas and firing ranges. So that the Battle Brothers might concern themselves only with owning their spirit and body, the more menial tasks of the Fortress Monastery are dealt with by the chapter serfs. These lay servants are drawn either from the local population or sometimes failed recruits, allowing them to serve despite not becoming Space Marines themselves. They clean the vast vaulted chambers and prepare the Battle Brothers' Spartan meals. When work is too intricate or complicated for servitors, it is the chapter serfs who tend to the task for their superhuman masters, moving like shadows through the halls and catacombs of the monastery. Though they do have a trusted place beside the battle brothers they serve, they remain mostly invisible to them, just another function of the monastery which allows them to focus on the needs of their warrior life. Every fortress monastery is unique to the chapter it belongs to, and the world upon which it stands. 
However, many of them do share some common chambers and rooms, built as they are in part upon the teachings of the Codex Astartes. In today's episode, we're gonna detail some of the more general purpose aspects of a fortress monastery, and we're gonna get to the more specialized chambers next time. As the name implies, a Space Marine Fortress Monastery is constructed to withstand an assault from almost any kind of enemy. Ringed with high walls, or built into the heart of a mountain or other natural defense, the monastery comprises dozens of ramparts, watchtowers, and bastions. Every entrance is sealed by heavy adamantium, ceramite, or stone gates, barred by ancient and complex locking mechanisms, often keyed to the unique genetic code of the chapter's battle brothers. The monastery will also often incorporate shimmering void shields, domes of power enveloping the entire structure to ward away orbital bombardment or assault from enemy battle titans. Covering every entrance and approach, macro cannon turrets, heavy boulder bunkers, and missile batteries scan the horizon for the enemy. Whether on the remotest of worlds, or firmly within the grasp of the Imperium, a fortress monastery is always ready for war. The lands beyond its walls and gates are always considered hostile, and only the most trusted allies of the chapter are admitted inside. In addition to thick walls and gates, the chapter will also create other kinds of defenses to further disencourage assault. These can consist of almost anything that can bring woe to an attacker, be they nets of grav mines, vortex pits, or electro pylons, each one capable of killing entire squads of the enemy. Natural defenses are frequently incorporated into a fortress monastery, and were doubtless a motivating factor for their ancient builders. On mundane imperial worlds, this could mean placing the fortress atop a high mountain peak, deep within the heart of a forbidding jungle, or embedded beneath a frozen polar ice cap. Death worlds provide alternative means of repelling the enemy, such as forests of carnivorous plants, airless planes bombarded with solar radiation, and even shifting tectonic seas of magma. The chapter fleet is also maintained at the fortress monastery when not transporting battle brothers across the galaxy. Any ships present will add to the might of the fortress defenses, either from within a shielded docking arrays or geosynchronous orbit above, their heavy guns scanning the surrounding void. A fortress monastery will often have a very large entrance chamber, designed to convey the might of the chapter and awe all who walk through the gates. Known as the Great Hall, this Cyclopean room is lined with statues of heroes, its walls carved with reliefs depicting the glorious history of the chapter. An emissary led into the hall must pass under the gaze of those stone and bronze giants, his eyes are drawn up into the shadows of the vaulted ceiling, where frescoes show bloody battles and scenes of ancient heroism. In the center of the chamber, the chapter symbol will often dominate the floor, easily a hundred meters across, so that none may doubt whose fortress it is they stand in. The Great Hall is not used only to display the glory and power of the chapter, but it is also big enough for a full company to assemble. The space marines of the chapter will sometimes gather here in the presence of their ancestors, before embarking on a mission or a campaign. It is written in the Codex Astartes that a chapter must be mindful of their heritage, the genetic past that connects it to their Primarch, and ultimately to the Emperor. Every chapter has its own means and methods of honoring their heroes and forebears, but many indeed use the Great Hall for this exact ritual. The Great Hall is the glorious face of the chapter, hiding its secrets, sins, or shame behind a facade of grand monuments. While the Fortress Monastery is mainly a venue of worship, training, and defense, it is also a place where the Space Marines and their servants can rest. Each battle brother has their own cell within the monastery, which, depending on the creed of the chapter, might be a bare stone room bereft of any ornamentation or it can be the refuge of a warrior, its walls hanging with weapons and trophies. In either case, a space marine cell is unique to the individual, and for as long as he lives it will remain so, a place where he can pray alone and contemplate the glory of the Emperor. By contrast, the chapter serves that maintain the fortress monastery 
live in sprawling dormitories, which, though still basic, are more spacious and comfortable than the cells. This is partly because the chapter serfs live most of their lives within the walls of the monastery. And as a place where the battle brothers rarely tread, the dormitories become their home. Indeed, many imperial citizens would be impressed by the life of a chapter serf. While not offering them any great luxury, most chapters do ensure the well-being of those that tend to their needs. Even chapter masters will seldom have cells more impressive than that of a regular battle brother. Though they might have war rooms and audience chambers, in which they conduct the business of the chapter, their own personal quarters are usually simple, befitting a warrior monk, regardless of station. When a space marine dies, the chapter serves clear out his cell and make sure that his possessions are either buried with him, or, if that is not possible, stored within the depths of the fortress. Many monasteries have extensive catacombs beneath their walls, containing hundreds of centuries worth of trinkets, trophies and honor tokens from countless generations of battle brothers. Often a group of serfs will spend their lives extending these catacombs and enshrining their belongings until the fortress rests on a veritable uncharted maze of the dead. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you on the fortress monasteries of the Space Marines for today. I know a few of you have been requesting this topic for a very long time now, and I am glad I was finally able to bring it to you. Like I said, it is also not the only one I'm gonna make, as next time we're gonna cover some of the more specialized rooms and areas from inside the fortress. Are you a fan of these gigantic space marine bases? If you have any questions, thoughts and opinions on them, do write them down in the comments below. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching and I wish you all an awesome day. The Emperor Protects.